Cat. It's Maximus here. This time, this is just a basic overview and introduction of some common types of oscillating tool blades and also discussing some of the standards. They're pretty much universal standard, but that's happened in two ways. And oscillating tools like this that actually originated a long time ago as a surgical tool. And then I believe Fine uh, got the first rights to produce a essentially a consumer power tool. And then, of course, those all those patents ran out, and many companies now produce these. In my experience, I've had lots of Bosch's, DeWalt's, Porter Cables, a variety of these tools. They've all been really terrible until I came across this uh, Makita TM3010C. Really recommend it. Very stiff, very rigid, overbuilt mechanism, which needs to happen on one of these tools because how they work is they just vibrate back and forth just like so. And you really need one. A lot of the brands, they just don't overbuild it enough. So the spindle is just not rigid enough. And there isn't just enough oversized enough components. The whole drive mechanism needs to be really rigid uh, in order to actually deliver the energy to the blade. And when that happens, these tools work very well. They're really handy for cutting into plastics, doing all sorts of crafts and hobbies. They're used by construction or, you know, in construction. Uh, because they allow a lot of control, you can use blades such as these, which allow you to, or general wood cutting blades, and they allow you to plunge straight in because it's just vibrating a little bit. It's a big deal just to be able to cut a little slot if you're cutting in an outlet or anything in wood or various materials. You can actually just cut a simple square. It's very handy. These are offset. Many blades are like that. So, for instance, if you're replacing tile, or better said, replacing linoleum with some tile, then things like door trim will actually be hanging too low. Instead of dealing with trying to cut it using hand saws, you can tear up your old linoleum flooring, put a, make sure the surface is clean, put a piece of the tile down, and you run one of these blades over the top of it, or you may actually run one of these big uh, circular blades. These allow you to basically cut in any direction, and you can go right along the top of the piece of tile, and you can trim that piece of uh, door trim that's hanging down, and it will be at the exact level. I mean, they'll have a gap that's just super tiny, like a sixteenth of an inch. And so that's one of the many uses. They're very good at scraping. We have small blades that I've I actually ground this to make it a narrow scraper. We have wide scrapers. These are excellent for bringing up linoleum, all sorts of construction work. They can be used in automotive work when you have really recalcitrant ga gaskets. They even make straight big wide flexible scraper blades definitely pretty handy a quick uh tip was dremel really started popularizing was like the first after fine and they had their own special drive system and that created issues because there were different drive systems and uh, it was hurting sales of the overall market uh because one blade wouldn't fit on a certain tool etc so the two ways that they did this one Bosch tried to come up with what is known as this OIS system which was just a standardized pin spacing and a lot of people did adopt that and then they realized they could do things such as this where they can make multi cut a special type of cut in the blade that would support that would work on any tool any type of arbor whether it was like the the small Dremel style the larger Bosch OIS style and I don't know if this is the uh, us fine cruciform but apparently some of them actually had a cruciform drive part of the other way that this is dealt with in case you run into some blades that may just be dremel blades is like this makita actually comes with these adapter plates which is really handy these just go over the spindle and then this has a different pin spacing so you can run your dremel blades or anything else and so Fortunately, on modern ones, you're going to be able to pretty much run any blade. And if they don't come with adapters, just make sure that you buy blades that uh, have a universal fit. So, of course, there are fine tooth blades. There are various styles of those. We have ones where they have this cutout so they can really kind of reach and get into extremely tight spaces. Wide ones. We have short little uh, uh, stubby ones. You know, these are bimetal high speed steel edge with a softer steel. Uh, backing and they're good for cutting through nails and other small things uh, even Harbor Freight I picked up one of these these Hercules where they actually have a brazed carbide edge so these will actually work through various steels and hardened metals it won't be very fast but it will certainly uh, get through some pretty tough materials and then of course there's various ones like diamond grit wheels such as this 
diamond grit half wheels. We have carbide grit. These are mainly used for situations such as grout and um, hard ceramics, those types of things. You can certainly use an oscillating tool to cut tile. Uh, it's a little slow and noisy, but it'll definitely work. And you can make really precise cuts. There are ones like this, which are kind of like sanding. This actually came from Harbor Freight too. Really coarse carbide grit. But this is for basically sanding and roughing up and smoothing any hard, you know, ceramic materials, that type of thing. And then, of course, as a detail sander, many of these awesome the detail sanders were small vibrating sanders. I have one I couldn't dig up for uh, this video. But uh, they kind of had similar, similar triangular patches. So you have these, these are just simple adapters and they use hook and loop sandpaper. And these are Bosch ones. There may be some, it's kind of adapter that pulls the dust, uh, but most of them won't be able to retrieve dust. This is more kind of like a relief, but it is interesting. I think on the Bosch one, they have the special adapters, but the problem with the Bosch is, is that their drive system wears out really quickly, and then the blade just doesn't deliver any energy. And so that was just a quick overview of various oscillating tool blades, just kind of showing that there is a wide variety of them, from carbide tip to various carbide and diamond grit to all sorts of scraping and cutting blades. So you can pretty much cut and work on any project and these tools are really much safer just because of that and having both straight and offset blades they really are pretty versatile when you just you know where like a saw reciprocating saw or circular saw is just going to make way too big of a cut you actually have an option to make just a real precise slice they work great if you're trying to like maybe increase the size of a hole or something in wood for an electrical box you can use one of these types of blades here and be able to just trim off just a little bit of material very easily. And these blades really work well on plastic. Let me do a little demonstration here if I can get this all managed properly for the camera. There we go. I want a little bit more speed. And if you're cutting something like this, you're not supposed to cut things like this in your hand, but you have just an immense amount of control with one of these tools. And it's vibrating a little too much, and that's just because it's oftentimes you, people are going too slow. Give it just a little bit more speed, and you'll find a nice balance. And if I want to cut like a little half moon section off of this. Getting a little funky on me there. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but for instance, in this situation, if I wanted to make that type of a cut in this pretty hard acrylic plastic here, um, using a little saw and then trying to take a utility knife to cut down in there, would have required quite a bit of effort and certainly wouldn't have taken just a minute or two. Now all I have to do is just take maybe a Dremel sanding wheel to clean that up. And uh, that's just one example where they can make cuts that are just surprisingly enough doing cutting out a little half moon like that with a knife or any other type of cutting tool would actually require a bit of effort. Maybe drilling a hole crossways so you can run just a tiny little uh, jigsaw blade through there or something. Really kind of surprising when you can just pick up something like this and just have a little flat blade and make all sorts of modifications. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.